Monarch release. Be free. Let's see. You're gonna go and migrate. So right now it's August in New England. So letting some butterflies go. So I basically like to raise them until they're ready to go. They can be uh, checked for, a, I guess there's a, a parasite, uh, OE. And if we took some clear tape and put it on the abdomen of this butterfly, we could, uh, I guess, look for the oculist of the protozoa. Um, I have not been seeing any problems with these guys, which is great. There we go. Gone. What about you? You know, you can even tag these. Right now, I guess I'm just into letting them go. I think this is a girl. Yeah, your girl. When she opens up her wings, you can sex them. You ready? Time for you to go out and feed. So these just uh, morphed from a chrysalis yesterday. Hey, buddy. Here, let's see. What will I show? Here's some chrysalis that are hatching. So this one right here in the back, it's really dark. That one will come out today. This one will, it's in kind of, it's just starting to turn dark right now. That will probably go tomorrow. And these other two have maybe another day or two. They seem like they take about seven days to go. But when you are looking for caterpillars, you don't want to do it when it's uh, really hot. So like right now we're having a cooler day. It's only in the, you know, like 80 degrees. So this is, a, this is a plant that I've already pulled one caterpillar off. And generally one thing I want to point out is when a monarch is laying its eggs, like some, some animals will lay their eggs, you know, together on a host plant. Well, monarchs like to spread them out. So they'll lay like one egg, and that's because when that baby hatches, one of the first things it does, it's, it eats its eggshell. So, uh, let's take a look. Here we go. I just randomly just looked under this leaf. These are monarch eggs. Kind of tall, kind of like a capsule. So this is a really good host plant. And uh, one thing I want to point out about this, so you'll see this, there's really no there's nothing else around here. It's just literally this one plant. So I already pulled off an adult animal. So the reason why they don't lay generally many eggs on a leaf is actually very unusual to even see two so closely spaced. Uh, I'll see that sometimes on the milkweed pod, but not so much on the leaf. So if one were to hatch early, it's gonna eat its shell, and then possibly it could go to the other one that hasn't hatched yet and eat that. But these are clearly both from the same female, I would think. So uh, she just happened to lay two together, but I certainly see multiple eggs on milkweed seeds. This is uh, basically they, you know, they start from an egg and they go into the first instar and they'll feed for a bit and then they'll shed and they'll go into another. This is probably second instar. Uh, I'm guessing these people are probably more qualified to define exactly what the instars are, but uh, still pretty interesting. So this is a really good plant. So this animal is definitely showing signs of a older caterpillar that I pulled. But you wouldn't see a plant like this being annihilated by a whole, you know, brood of, of caterpillars. It's just, you know, usually one caterpillar, maybe, maybe two. Um, what they will do in a patch, they will move from plant to plant so this this animal may live on this this plant for a while but if there's other milkweed over time it's going to move and sometimes when they have to turn into chrysalis they'll right when they're in the fifth instar they'll stop eating for maybe a day or two 
they clean themselves out. And a lot of times they'll move off that host plant, sometimes to another plant that's not even a milkweed or not even a host plant. And I think that's basically to def defy the uh, predators or whatever, because you know the predation on these things is you know they're clearly vulnerable as a caterpillar, yet alone a chrysalis. Let's sex a monarch butterfly. See that little vein that has pretty much right dead center, you see that black blotch? So if you look at the wings, the male has that, and a female, which I'll try to do a video of what it looks like, doesn't. You need to be very careful when you're handling these butterflies because you don't want to break the wing, nor do you want to rub off all the scalation. But this is another baby. We just, goodbye. So we have these hatching every day. And here, here's the chrysalis. So right before these guys get ready to, uh, to transform, it's gonna turn black and then clear. And you can actually sex your butterfly even looking at the chrysalis, but you won't. And uh, I feed them sugar water. And I've attracted a little white-faced hornet. All right, for all the people that I'm annoying with my monarch butterfly caterpillar obsession, I'm almost done. But I've had people messaging me just interested. Here's a couple. This is just like a... Ooh, ooh. So there's, there's some uh, chrysalis. And... Uh, just kind of put them in here. So this is basically just some caterpillars I'm raising. So the, the trick is I just basically take a bin like this put Vaseline around the top and some of them will crawl up here and then go into this uh, J position and then they'll, they'll uh, shed off their skin which is this little bit right here and uh, they'll go into a chrysalis and it takes about a, a week for that chrysalis at you know room temperature all this stuff is specific to you know ambient temperatures so if it's a little bit warmer you know within their tolerable range it means something might you know an egg might hatch quicker or something may you know morph quicker but uh if it's cooler it'll take longer i'm gonna show you one thing how do we take so we can take when we when we have um babies so the first instar so let's say we find a leaf with an egg on it what we can do huh i didn't think this through how do i position this let's see no so what we can do is we want to get this leaf through this hole. And then what we do is we fill that bin full of water. So I just did. I took this leaf and I, I sliced up along the stem. And what I do, I just take it and I push that through the hole. And what we're doing is we're creating a water supply for this leaf. So you can put this in a bin, and you can put obviously many leaves. You could easily put, you know, four or six leaves in a flat style thing like this. And you could just take the lid, lid off to pop it off, you know, clean it, uh, change the water out. But if you pretty much have a water supply to your milkweed, you're gonna be able to host that caterpillar for days. It, it'll take days for them to basically lay to waste a leaf like this. And changing out your leaves after, you know, uh, four days or something like that when they're like this. As long as it's, the leaf appears pretty fresh, you don't want to have it so it's yellowing or something like that where you see the chlorophyll is, is turning bad or whatever. You want like a nice, clean leaf. So I, I tend to look at some of my smaller, fresher leaves, which uh, seem to uh, really attract the attention. I've also had them where they'll eat the milkweed pod. And um, also, you can also re relocate a chrysalis. So it's got a little, they, they'll attach like a little thread and whatever. I just took this off there and I used a piece of tape. Uh, scotch tape or something like that is better. Just double it over on itself. Make it so it's not sticky. So when this butterfly comes out, it doesn't get stuck to it. Uh, a couple other things to note too. I noticed when I first was uh, molting out my butterflies like if I do moths and stuff like that they seem to like they'll breed pretty quick like polyphemus moth or something like that or a luna but something like these these 
monarchs because I think their life cycle as a butterfly is longer. They're uh, more a little bit more luxurious with their time. So I've had animals where I've held for you know four or five days and I have not really witnessed copulation. But what I understand is the male has to be at least four days or older for it to even be viable as far as copulating and stuff like that. So I'm kind of learning. But right now, I've pretty much it's all about just uh, getting them into a chrysalis and then uh, turning that into a butterfly and then releasing that. All right, hopefully I'm, I'm kind of finishing up with my information. I just, it's kind of nice just to educate people because uh, as a kid, I've always had an appreciation for insects. I'm really fascinated by all sorts of things, being jumping spiders, uh, I don't care what it is, ants. All that kind of stuff is really cool. So this is this is kind of fun to play with because stuff happens pretty fast. So for people, you know, short attention spans, you can actually do something pretty cool. Every day is something you know new, and you have something to look forward to. But if you have little kids, you can really start their appreciation of animals and showing how they can be a, a positive factor, in, you know, in the environment and do something good. Considering that you know the average human and human activity is is very detrimental to uh, our native species, our environment, wildlife in general, and to just the welfare of the planet. We are absolutely a detriment to this planet. So I just try to slow the breeding, uh, no, yeah, breeding and bleeding, excuse me, the bleeding uh, and slow down what, you know, ultimately what we're doing to the planet and all the species that live there. So I just kind of like to see little things that are interesting. I learn about it and I've just been kind of teaching myself all about the monarchs, the life cycle, just being able to go into a field and find them. That, that can be a little bit of a trick when you don't have fields that are just loaded. You know, you could probably go down to like Pennsylvania and the fields are just loaded or, or stuff like that. But if any place has been using, um, you know, any kind of weed killers or pesticides and stuff like that, that has a real solid impact on these guys.